If you're a flashlight enthusiast who's really into throw, you probably already own an LEP like this Astrolux WP2. But then the question begs, what if I just had a laser? Well, these are dangerously fun. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. I don't normally review lasers. I have a few, as you can see here. But J Lasers sent me this little boy, and it's awesome, super awesome. So I wanted to bring it to you and tell you what it's like. Well, let me start, if you don't know much about lasers, let me start with the fact that these guys right here, sometimes called 303 lasers, uh, you can find these on eBay for you know, about $25, $30. And they sometimes come with like a really bad 18650 battery. And I got one here in green, which one? This one's probably red. I got a blue one. And all of these claim to be 5 milliwatts. Now, 5 milliwatts is something that the FDA set as a safe level that you're not really going to hurt yourself. Now, if you shine that straight into your eye, even a 5 milliwatt, if you shine it straight into your eye, it, it could do permanent damage. Um, however, 5 milliwatts, if it were to glance over your eye, you'd probably be okay. But here's the problem. On eBay, these guys are never 5 milliwatts. Most of these are about 100 milliwatts. And that's so much higher than the safe limit that I just want to get this out of the way and say that you have to wear goggles, folks. you got to invest in some good laser goggles like these. I'll have a link in the description. These ones look orange, and that's because they basically block all light but orange wavelengths. And you'll notice that none of my lasers here are in the orange range. So this effectively blocks all these. I wanna point out that these are super dangerous. You could have permanent eye damage if used improperly and that you must wear laser goggles at all times. When you move up from these, which are about 30 bucks, to these guys, these are custom lasers built by enthusiasts. These are usually anywhere from 100 to $200, depending on the options and the diode and things like that. And some of these are 1.5 watts. Some of these are, what's well, blue one right here is up to 5 watts. So it's a, it's a very insanely dangerous and powerful laser. But the reason why I wanted to set all that up was because JL Lasers sent this to me for review. And this is a really tiny 450 nanometers blue laser that just slips in your pocket. It's a double A light. It runs, well, not double A, truly. It's actually LiPo or lithium ion. And the lithium ion cell is the uh, 14500 here. I do not think this will run on a double A. I believe it'll be under voltage. But anyhow, this guy is really tiny and it puts out a ton of wattage. So again, be very careful with it. Wear safety goggles. Since we're talking about a blue laser, let me go ahead and just kind of get down to blue lasers here. And let me mention that blue lasers have a ton of energy in them. What I mean by that is these things can easily ignite things on fire. And uh, they're some of the most dangerous lasers you can get. Uh, the green lasers are a little bit... And I wouldn't say safer, but let's just say that they don't ignite, tend to ignite things on fire like the blue ones. Uh, those short wavelengths are insane for uh, energy. Uh, the reason why green lasers are a little, quote, safer is because at lower wattage, they appear even brighter. And when we start doing beam shots in the day and in the night, you'll see that uh, the green holds up with the blue, even though the blue is much more energy. So I got here uh, just a, a cheap 303 green uh, for calibration purposes. I've got uh, my 5-watt blue, and then I got this J Lasers 1.6-watt uh, blue. And uh, these are different diodes. I don't know the exact diode of this one. This guy, I'm not familiar with the diode, the 450 nanometer blue. So it's a slightly different color, not that I think you'd notice it much. And it's rated at 1,600 milliwatts uh, output. So I don't know what the uh, raw output of the diode is, but I know Jay Lasers told me it's 1.6 watts, 1,600 milliwatts. Okay, let's take a look at the actual output of these lasers. I'm going to start with this green because I know it's around 100 milliwatts, but I think 105 if I remember correctly. This is an LPM. If you're not familiar with this, this is a laser power meter and basically has a thermal pile here and you shine the laser at it, turns it into heat and measures for how many milliwatts it is. Let's take a look at uh, if I'm pretty well calibrated. And of course, I've got my uh, laser goggles on and you can see that the value is rising up there and you can see that I'm about... Uh, 110. 
maybe a little bit higher. 110, 111. Well, this is a fresh battery, so uh, and the driver in this is basically just direct drive from what I know. It's just taking directly off the uh, lithium-ion battery. So there you go. Um, so this is a typical Chinese uh, $30 uh, laser off of eBay. Uh, the blue one I have over here runs about 80 milliwatts. Uh, that's, uh, that's appropriately named the assassin. I, I believe that would hurt you. Uh, but anyways, this is about 80 milliwatts. And um, I won't bother testing it to make this video too long. But I also want to point out that, uh, just again, for calibration purposes, if I shine my 5 milliwatt here at the LPM, you'll see that this is going to go up to about uh, 5 watts, a little higher. Well, let me hold it steady. Holding it steady is super important. But you can see we already hit 5 watts or 5.2 or so. If I held it more steady, I'd probably get around 5.3 watts. All right, now let's see how the J Lasers fares. Now remember, this is a so this right here was about 150, maybe 100, maybe 200 dollar laser. I'm trying to remember, I think it was something somewhere in there. Uh, this guy, and this is a big selling point for this laser, is it's sold by J Lasers for 59 dollars. What an incredible steal! So let's take a look here. Go ahead and shine it right there at the thermal pile and get it close. Oh, let me reset this so we can see the max. But uh, we can see that this thing is rating out at, wow, 1.56. Yeah, 1.56, maybe rounding up to 7. There you go. Now, of course, just like flashlights, there's some battery sag and the diode starts to warm up. And so the uh, rate starts to fall down. But uh, we got a peak here of 1.56 watts. So that's amazing. You look at two lasers like this, and one's 5 watts and one's 1.5 watts, and you say, hey, what's that going to look like differently in the sky? Well, we'll take a look, okay? Let's take a look in the daytime and at night, because these aren't just for messing around with. These are completely uh, valid for pointing out objects far away during the day. All right, let's take a look at how this laser does during the day. Such a cool little laser too. So before I even start, notice that I would never shine this as a human being. If there was a car coming, I would immediately turn it off. And also I happen to know that my neighbors are away for the weekend. So nobody's coming out of that house I'm about to shine it at. It's about, uh, I, I'm just guessing here, about 30 to 40 meters away. And let's start out with the uh, bigger one just to see, you know, what these things look like during the day. And, you know, if it's worth spending three to four times the money and carrying out this big honking thing versus something that slips so easily into your pocket. So let's turn on the uh, big five watt. And you can see that there is a blue dot over on that uh, house over there. It was over on the garage and now it's on kind of the pillar right there. And you can see that it's actually kind of a line. I bet you can make that out. And that line is uh, normal. These are multi-mode lasers and you're never gonna get a fine point. That is as, actually as narrow as it gets. And you can see that we can easily see this thing during the day. Now let's go to the 1.5 watt, this little guy, and let's see how it does, okay? So click it on. Oh, it's out of focus. This is probably a good time to talk about that. I don't know if you can tell, but it was just this huge out of focus blob on the garage there. Now, mostly that was because I had this thing focused for uh, looking at the LPM. So I'm gonna turn the front optic until I get a little tiny line. Okay, there we go. So there you have it. So there's a little line there that is on the uh, garage and now it's over on the pillar. And you can see that it is really bright. So let's go side by side and see, you know, I gotta be honest. I mean, yeah, the five watts brighter, but I wouldn't say, you know, three, four times brighter, slightly. In fact, the line on the little guy is better, isn't it? So that's pretty cool. I also wanna point out that if you want something highly visible in the day, I would go a green laser. Here is a uh, less than 1.5 watt green laser. So this is, this laser here has less wattage than the little tiny J lasers blue. So take a look and you can see that it is much easier to see this little green laser. Well, the, I mean the dots little, it's a giant laser, 
but you can see it's also a line. So if you want something for pointing out in the daytime, blue will work, but green is probably much better for spotting with your eyes. All right, time for some beam shots. First, I'm gonna start with a green 303 laser. Green lasers are very, very intense because our eye's peak receptivity is 555 nanometers, and these things are around 532 or 540. And you can see that was in the sky. Here it is on that tree over there. And then on this far, there you go, on the far uh, power line, power pole. All right, now let's take a look at the J laser. Oh, wow, look at that. That is amazing. The blue is so intense. And also realize that the blue is going to be less bright than green at the same wattage. That's just how intense this laser is. Now, if we take a look at my five watt blue, which I have as well, here's a five watt. You can see the five watt is super intense as well, but here's the thing, for the money, wow, this one on the right, the J laser really delivers. So again, if you wanna get into high powered lasers and you're looking for something that is just intense, this J laser fits the bill for one third to one fourth of the cost of this five watt that I have. Not to mention the fact that you can stick it in your pocket. All right, here we got a little small box and you know, I'm gonna shine both the green laser that I have and this little tiny blue jail lasers at it just to show how much more energy the blue has. The uh, green laser, as I said, is around just under a, a watt and this one is about 1.6, but trust me, the blue itself is so much more dangerous. So let's take a look. I'll uh, shine it here on the box and you'll see that the green laser, I'm trying to hold still, Try and hold it real still. I'm having trouble igniting the box. So there you go, that's having a little issue there. All right, let's try the JL Lasers Blue and you can see how much more energy. See, it's instant. It's a big difference, okay? So you can see there's a little tiny ember right there too. So that should illustrate how dangerous these uh, blue lasers are. So be really careful. I would say only up into the sky, not around airplanes for sure. That's a federal offense. Um, and always use safety goggles and keep them out of the hands of children. All right, let's take a look at the construction of this thing. Usually I do this first in a flashlight video, but on a laser video, it just seemed like it was uh, less important than actually looking at the beam. Uh, it's got a little lens in the front. This is to, again to focus the multi-mode diode. And as I said, this when this lens is uh, off you're going to get a bunch of lines and you basically just focus it into a single line and you get the smallest little single line you can if you take the lens off don't lose this little spring the spring is providing back pressure so the lens will stay in spot and you'll see that when you turn it on here you got a series of lines and you just want to go ahead and get those into a tiny little focus line at the distance you're at uh, I find that if you hit a pretty good focus line at about, you know, 30, 40 meters away, you're going to be pretty good all the way up into infinity because uh, that's the way optics work. Now, the host itself, I just love the look of it. I actually think this is one of the best lasers I have. Uh, these guys, the little 303s, they look just, you know, mass produced and, you know, they're all right. Uh, the buttons on these, by the way, feel terrible. The buttons are just, uh, I don't know, they're just just adequate. Now, if you look at the custom lasers I got uh, from other vendors, I mean, they look pretty good. I mean, I kind of like it. It's a, it's a little bit maybe too fancy in some ways. Um, it just a little bit, kind of too much going on. I think that this laser has a real kind of, I don't know, dare I say, magizmo look to it. It's definitely not made out of titanium. It's definitely a stainless steel body. But it's got some heft to it. It's got some chonk. It's got a little reverse clicky on the back. So that means that you have to click all the way in until it activates. And uh, if there were modes, this driver doesn't have any modes, it's a one mode driver, then you would just tap to go through them. I actually like that it's a one mode driver. Uh, I actually dislike multi-mode drivers for lasers because I almost always want to just be at 100%. And one of the worst drivers I have ever had is in this green laser because this one has no mode memory and it's got blinkies. 
So every time, you know, I turn it on, um, I advance to the next mode. It's just very irritating that you have to use, you know, I'll point something out in the sky, like for astronomy or in the distance. And then uh, when I turn it off, it's like the next time I go to click it on, it's going to go either a mode uh, lower or to one of the blinkies. So it's really irritating. Uh, so unlike flashlights, I think that a single mode driver is the best thing you can get for a little tiny laser like this. I want to point out that when you unscrew it, the threads are reasonably smooth. They actually, I mean, they felt all right. Um, it's not the finest threads I've ever seen, and I, I feel a little bit of burrs on the edge here, but again, for 59 bucks, I'm not trying to overanalyze this. I wish that maybe the uh, threads here had come with a little lube on it, and I'll just go ahead and do that right on air here, just because I, I it, they're just totally dry. And um, I actually find that's pretty par for the course with lasers. I don't think I've ever received a laser from a manu manufacturer that had lube on the threads, something that's so commonplace with flashlights. I never see it with lasers. But uh, now that I just did that, actually, you know, this feels a lot better. So I did feel some burrs on my finger on the end there and, uh, you know, kind of some light texture. But, man, this is actually a lot better now. Okay, so there you go. When you get your laser, lube it up. Um, or maybe even J lasers will start doing that. Hey, JL, if you're watching, just get a, a big tub like this, big tub of uh, super lube. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. And uh, I also wanted to point out that, like is commonly accepted with flashlights, the terminal, the positive terminal goes towards the head. But it would have been awesome if there was like a little sticker or something in here that said which direction it goes. Uh, I don't want to test whether there is reverse protection. Some of these drivers do have reverse protection, but some do not. I don't feel like frying this laser, but I want to point out that on other lasers I have, there's usually like a little sticker that shows which way the battery should go. All right, I wanted to finish this video by talking about where you could get your JL Custom Laser and just how it sits in the market as far as price and performance. So Wicked Lasers is really well known. I don't think Wicked Lasers is a, you know, I don't endorse them or say you should get from them, but I just hear people in, you know, our flashlight sub talk about them often. So, you know, let's start here. So you got a blue laser, one watt, 200 bucks, okay? You go for the two watt upgrade, 250 bucks. So already you can tell what a value this 1.6 watt is for $59.99. And you can get it here at JL Lasers. And JL Lasers, you can see they have all different spectrum here of colors. And here's the one that I'm using right here, this uh, 450 nanometer 1.6 milliwatt laser in stock, $59.99 plus shipping. Now it comes from Canada. So if you're in the U.S., you're going to pay a little bit for that. But, I mean, gosh, you're saving so much money over some of these other manufacturers. Also, you're supporting small business. This is a company that's run by one guy, kind of a you know Hank Wang, if you will, and he hand-builds everything in-house. The uh, website up here, I'm going to put a link in the description, and i am also got some text on screen right now. It's uh, a tricky link. You know, Again, he's a small business, so he hasn't paid for the .com yet. So it's uh, sites.google.com slash and all this. I just want to point out that when you put it in, uh, old is spelled with an extra E, you know, kind of like an old timey version and shop is spelled with an extra E as well. So again, if you're looking for a cost effective, great, just wow of a laser, this is it. And if you've heard me give a bunch of disclaimers during this video about wearing proper eye protection, keeping it out of the hands of children, I'm not trying to overstate this, these are seriously dangerous. And one small reflection, one specular reflection off something shiny can get this thing to come back to your eye and cause permanent blindness. So be really careful, guys. And if you're looking, I just don't want to feel like I made anyone go get a device that they were not comfortable with and they caused themselves harm, okay? All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.